This video covers material about solubility and the concept of solvent solute in the chemistry world. The material presented was originally developed by Andrew Lucas and modified and narrated by Alan Rodriguez. This video is made possible by the National Science Foundation funded project Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom at Ohio University. So I have a question for you. Do you know what does the term solubility means? Or do you know what is a solution? Or what about what is a solute or a solvent? If you answer no to any of these questions, or even if you feel you should review these concepts, then I invite you to study and review with me the presentation titled Solubility and Solute-Solvent Interactions. What does all this mean? It's important for me to state at this point that the material presented in this lesson is complementary to class or a review type presentation. Due to matters of time, it is difficult to compile a full course on solubility in the allowable video length. So let's go ahead and start our discussion. Before starting this lesson, I recommend you to review with your teachers the concept of polarity versus nonpolar compounds and homogeneous versus heterogeneous mixtures. As the presentation goes on, I'll define this briefly, departing from the assumption that you are already familiarized with these concepts. This being said, let's look at our imaginary glass of water. So here we have water. And let us imagine that to this water, we're going to add either sugar or salt. So in your mind, pick either one and add it to the glass of water. Try to think for a moment, as I know you've probably done this before, what will happen to the water? Will it change color? Will it change physical or chemical properties? Will you see the grains of salt of or sugar floating in the solution? Well, if you've done it before, you know that unless you add a whole bunch, the sugar or salt on water just disappears. This occurs because the sugar or salt dissolve in water to form a solution, concept that we'll define soon. If you exceed too much the amount of sugar or salt added, soon you'll see that the sugar or salt is no longer dissolving, but it will start conglomerating in the glass bottom. This occurs because the water is saturated of sugar or salt, meaning that it can no longer hold more sugar, so the rest goes straight to the bottom. This is more easy to visualize if you think about the water being you and the salt or sugar being weights in a gym. There's a maximum amount of weight that you can lift. If you exceed those levels, your muscles will just give up and the weight will be dropped to the floor. Get it? So why choose sugar versus salt? Well, that's because there are two types of compounds that I want to discuss here, molecular and ionic. So molecular compounds, also known as covalent compounds, and as the name suggests, these are compounds in which the atoms share electrons in a covalent bond. Ionic compounds, as the name suggests, these are compounds in which two or more ions are held next to each other by the electro electrical attraction. So if we look at a molecular level, ionic compounds are broken down to its ions and water rearranged, molecularly speaking, according to the ion charge and its polarity to dissolve it. Molecular compounds are just separated to its molecules and dissolved by other types of intermolecular forces. Let's now give a formal definition of these concepts I want to introduce. So solution. The definition of solution is a homogeneous mixture. Solvent. Substance that is present in bigger quantities in a solution. Solute substance that is present in less quantities in a solution. Now that we define this concept, let's look at our original example again and apply the concepts learned. So looking at our ingredients, water will be the solvent, the salt or sugar will be the solute, and the mixture between water and sugar or salt will be known as the solution.
It is said that both salt and sugar are soluble in water. So a fair question will be, what does it mean to be soluble? This is very simple. Take, for instance, the phrase, alcohol and water and salt are all soluble in water. This means that they are all able to dissolve in water and make an homogeneous mixture. You need to be careful. Not always being soluble means that you'll form a solution. Sometimes solubility can be forced by, for example, applying pressure, changing temperatures, and solvent compositions. The best example available is the solubility of gas in a liquid. As you can see, the lower the pressure over the gas-liquid interface, the lower the amount of gas dissolved in the liquid. In an analogous way, the higher the pressure over the gas-liquid interface, the higher the amount of gas in the liquid face. Can you think of a real-life example of this situation? If your answer was soda, you are correct. The soda cans are usually pressurized to maintain the gas dissolved in the liquid. That's why you hear that pssss when you open the can. That's the pressure being released. And as you probably notice in a transparent soda can, once this happens, lots of gas bubbles make their way up to the top when the pressure is released. Just to give you a tip, if you ever buy a big can of soda, make sure you keep it cold. Cold temperatures maintain the gas dissolved in the liquid. If the soda is warm, it'll lose faster the gas in it, and eventually it'll taste bad. Here are some of the most commonly seen examples of solubility. Gas liquid. The example is carbon dioxide in water on a liquid media such as soda. Liquid liquid. An example will be alcohol in water. And solid liquid. The example will be the one we utilize at the beginning of this presentation, salt, sugar, in water. Let's define one more concept. The question now is, so what should I say if the compound is not soluble? A compound that is not soluble in a media is referred to as being insoluble. So an example of this will be water and oil. If you've probably done these experiments before, you notice that water and oil do not mix. That's because the oil is insoluble in water. Finally, let's define one last concept, which is the result of a chemical reaction. Take for instance this reaction as you can see in the screen. We're not going to worry about the chemical names of this species or the nomenclature of this species, but just take that we are mixing one solution with another. So when you mix two or more solutions, it's possible that in the process of mixing, a chemical reaction occurs in which a new compound forms. It can be either solid, gas, or liquid. That is insoluble. If, if it's a solid and it remains at the flask bottom, it is known as the precipitate. If it's gas, it will leave the liquid, and if it's liquid, it will separate by its density. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for your attention.